eminenze, eccellenze, fratelli e sorelle, eminences, tutti, sisters and brothers, welcome all, we wish you peace to all of you and thank you for the opportunity, for the invitation to hold this lecture. And it's a highly topical theme we are going to tackle, especially if we think in depth about the connection between the Eucharist and the holiness of life. If we put them side by side, we will see that holiness is the reality uh, to which we have a vocation by our faith. We are invited to become holy in our lives. As mentioned in the chapter 5 of Lumen Gentum, it's uh, the perfection of holiness. On the other hand, if we look at the Eucharist, we will see that as Christians, it is the sacramental caritatis. Uh, uh, is where we're invited to. That is an invitation to uh, holiness of life on the one hand, and the other part of the mystery is an invitation to the um, sacred meal. The link between holiness and, and the Eucharist is clearly affirmed in the sacramental caritatis. From the liturgy, therefore, and particularly from the Eucharist, grace derives in us and from its source and the sanctification of man in Christ and that glorification of God to which all the other activities of the church tend as they are to their end. The Eucharist, therefore, as a source of holiness, leads us to consider all the church's activities as aimed at the sanctification of men for the greater glory of God. Moreover, St. John Paul II emphasized how holiness finds its strength, center, and its summit in the Eucharist. He said, every commitment to holiness, every action aimed at carrying out the church's mission, every implementation of pastoral plans must draw the necessary strength from the Eucharistic mystery and must be ordered to it as its culmination. Aveva affermato il legame tra Eucaristia e Santità. Benedict XVI, still in Sacramento Caritatis, had affirmed the link between the Eucharist and holiness in reference to the different forms of Christian life, showing the relevance of the gospel to every existential condition. He says, if the uh, Eucharistic sacrifice nourishes and increases in us what is already given to us in baptism, for which we are all called to holiness, then this must emerge and show itself precisely in the situations or states of life in which every Christian finds himself. Sacramento dell'Eucaristia di impegnarci. One becomes day by day a cult pleasing to God by living one's life as a vocation, beginning with a liturgical convocation, it is the sacrament of the Eucharist itself that commits us to daily reality. Pope Francis recalls the inseparable bond between the Eucharist and the life of holiness. We must not forget that we celebrate the Eucharist in order to learn to become Eucharistic men and women. What does this mean, asks Pope Francis. It means letting Christ act in our works. May his thoughts be our thoughts, his feelings ours, his choices our choices. And this is holiness. That is to do as Christ did in Christian holiness. Holiness asks us to become Eucharistic persons, that is, people whose life has taken on Eucharistic form. The Eucharist conforms us more and more every day to Christ. And for this reason, it fulfills in time the vocation to holiness proper to all the faith. Investigating the link between the Eucharist and the holiness of life involves addressing two questions. First of all, the fact that the Eucharist can be a source of holiness as it is the sacraments of Christ 
content remained to the church, thus responding to one of the most acute objections, objections that modernity has raised around Christianity as a historical fact confined to the past. The source is such only if it can be drawn here and now. Moreover, the link between the Eucharist and the holiness of life highlights the need to overcome the separation between holiness and daily life. As a result of the process of secularization that has characterized modernity, especially that as concerns the West. Therefore, I carry out this reflection in two passages. First of all, I'm going to illustrate the theological meaning of the original connection between the Eucharist and the holiness of life, and then, second, to indicate some elements of how dynamically the Eucharist is attested to as a source of holiness in the daily daily life of every believer. So, a uh, universal vocation to holiness and the Eucharist is a, a, an intrinsic bond. To understand this, it is necessary, first of all, to remind ourselves that holiness is God's mysterious plan. So, Paul reminds us that we are chosen to be holy and unspotted before him in a kind of way. In fact, we were chosen before uh, the creation of the world. So, by being invited to the perfection of love, this Eucharistia is dunque originario. The link between uh, the Eucharist and holiness is at the foundation of our faith. After all, it's a vocation. We must recognize, however, that the word vocation is in many respects out of fashion, as is the word holiness. The word vocation for some centuries has been identified only uh, by uh, only those so-called special consecration to the presbyterate and to the consecrated life. And, but this is a restricted view and is a product of modern age where secularization has turned the world increasingly worldly. Holiness, especially during the hardest clash with modernity, was perceived as substantially alien to the human. It was thought for a long time that to live holiness, it was necessary to estrange oneself from the common human being. Let us just think of the idea of holiness as a fuga mundi, that is, flight from the world. In fact, the word vocation is essential for us to understand the mystery of a man and woman, the profound human relevance of holiness. This is why speaking of holiness of life is decisive today. The vocation to holiness must be lived, first of all, within the common conditions of life. Our daily life is the place of our sanctification. Now, how important in this regard was the journey of, of uh, the journey uh, and the spirituality of Vatican II, which made its own contribution to so many movements of thought in liturgy, biblical studies, and so on. Uh, the return to the fathers, the theology of the laity, and so on. And of Christian life, secular institutes, associations, and movements. 
And we must mention here the rediscovery of baptismal life and the centrality of the Eucharist for the life of the people of God. So, in fact, the rediscovery of the centrality of the Eucharist also meant the rediscovery of holiness as a vocation for all faithful. So it is in this perspective that the vocation uh, receives its theological and anthropological sense. The event of freedom and meaning, not something that is added to life in an extrinsic way or as a reality for the, for the chosen few. Okay. Holiness, in fact, is the vocation to the fullness of the human uh, life according to God, as, as, as created by God. As Gordium in Space explains, Christ reveals the Father and his love. For this reason, he has revealed man to himself and manifests to him his supreme vocation. The ultimate vocation of man is effectively one, the divine one. Therefore, what the vocation to holiness indicates is the truth of a human being. So, whoever follows Christ will become the perfect man and also becomes more man. The vocation to holiness is a response to the love of God to Christ in the Paschal Mystery. In every celebration, the precedence of love is shown, confirming the Apostle's expression, he loved us first, one John. This precedence of God's, God's love is well expressed in the fourth gospel in the account of the washing of the feet. The, the synoptic gospels record the institution of the Eucharist, where, and also, but in uh, Gospel 4, there's a longer treatise about that, the talking about the bread of life. He is among us as the one who serves and calls his disciples to do the same. God's charity and humility amaze and disarm. It is, it is the Eucharistic wonder of which Sacramentum Caritatis spe speaks in its insipid what an amazement must have taken the hearts of the apostles in the face of the Lord's gestures. Holiness is born and nourished by a Eucharistic wonder or miracle of the love of Christ who bends down to us to the point of giving himself without reserve in the mystery of Easter. In the minutes to come, I will talk about the Easter. La cui speaks some proof and evidence as provided by saints whose relationship between the Eucharist and the holiness of life is, is a very special relationship one. We talk about the saints of charity. Think, for example, of St. Teresa of Calcutta. Her mission began every day before dawn, before the Eucharist, in the silence of contemplation. And he heard Jesus' cry resound on the cross, I thirst. La spingeva sulle strade di Calcutta e di tutte le periferie. This cry gathered in the depths of her heart, impelled her on to the streets of Calcutta and all of the peripheries of the world in search of Jesus in the poor, in the abandoned, in the dying. This is so in her there was a profound circularity between the Eucharist, the celebrated and adored, and the loving service of others. When you look at the crucifix, you can understand how much Jesus loved you, she said, she wrote. When you look at the Eucharist, you understand how much Jesus loves you at this moment, she adds. Thus linking the Eucharist to the experience of Christ's love, contemporary with his with our life. I'd also like to recall 
another story. Uh, a 15 year old boy uh, from Milan. Proclamato beato da Papa Francesco, Carlo Acutis, che nella sua santità adolescente ha messo al centro della sua vita la celebrazione della Santa Messa e l'Eucaristia, l'adorazione eucaristica. Un ragazzo normale ed eccezionale. Un average boy, but special at the same time, with a lot of compassion in his heart and deep love for the needy. He said this of the Eucharist. This is my highway to heaven. He was an expert in the digital word, world and he created an online exhibition of Eucharistic miracles. Eucaristici che si possono visitare ancora adesso. Riteneva con una Actually you can access this uh, exhibition and he believed with the disarming simplicity that today we're more fortunate than the apostles and those who lived in the time of Jesus so that we can meet him every day in every church where the Eucharist is celebrated, where it can be worshipped. As if to recall the evocative expressions of Charles Peggy in his Mystery of Charity of Joan of Arc. Nel suo favore, Mistero della Carità di Giovanna d'Arco. Egli è qui, è qui come il primo giorno, è qui tra noi come il giorno della sua morte, in eterno è qui tra di noi. She's here, it's like the first day, she's here among us as the day of her death, forever, no, I'm sorry, he, Jesus is here, it's here like the first day, he is here among us as the day, on the day of his death. In a nutshell, the saints attest to the Eucharist as the source of the holiness, because in it they experience the presence of Christ and the living memorial of Easter. L'Eucaristia è sorgente, Perché? So the Eucharist is a source because it is the sacrament of Christ's presence and Trinitarian love for our daily lives. In ciò troviamo allora la risposta. So here we have the answer to one of the strongest objections to Christianity raised in particular by modern thought. La nota obiezione del filosofo tedesco. Let's think of the well-known objection of the German philosopher Lessing, who considered it impossible that a historical fact in itself could be the bearer of an eternal and definitive truth. Gesù stesso, come tale, poteva essere... He thought that Jesus himself as such could be the truth only to those who were contemporary with him, but no longer for those who would come after him. The same author spoke of a horrendous moat that separates every historical fact from eternal truths. Here Christ is now felt as a historical figure, undoubtedly great, but confined to the past. The radical objection of the Enlightenment is not answered by the moralistic and intellectualistic, intellectualistic reduction of Christianity, but by the rediscovery that Christ himself remains present in history, first of all through the gift of the Eucharist in the Church, his body, and in the witness of the saints. Nella testimonianza dei Santi. In this perspective, it seems interesting to me to reread the two subtle enemies of holiness, as Pope Francis calls them in Gaudate et Exultare. Gnosticism and Pelagianism both, in different ways, replace the living presence of Christ with a theory or with their own moral efforts. These are ancient heresies which are nourished today through the criticism that in modernity have been addressed to Christianity. Current Gnosticism is the temptation to overcome the flesh of Christ and the flesh of our brothers and sisters, reducing faith to an idea. The modern Gnostic lacks the question, the begging, the prayer, the emotion 
for the other and for the love giver. Christ appears more as a source for an idea than as the source of holiness of life. The temptation of Pelagianism today appears instead, as Francis recalls, as adoration of the human will and of one's own capacity, which translates into an egocentric and elitist self-satisfaction devoid of true love. St. Augustine of Hippo, the great adversary of the monk Pelagius, accused, this is the horrendous and hidden poison of your error. Then you claim to make Christ, Christ's grace consist in his example and not in the gift of his person. Persona, il dono della sua persona. Per il moderno Pelagiano, Gesù that is he gave himself. For the modern Pelagian, Jesus is perhaps an inspirational model, a starting point for a moral morality, but not for the holy gift to living souls, a mystery of contemporary love of, for one's own life. In fact, this is precisely the mystery of ineffable love that we celebrate in the Eucharist the irreducible gift of his person and of the event of Easter that saves us here and now. The liturgy teaches us to recognize inexorably that the foundation of holiness is not a concept, not a theory or an ethical decision. It is the sweet presence of Christ, loved, welcomed and celebrated. A Milanese theologian, Giovanni Moioli, said in, his re said in this regard that Jesus gave us the sacrament of the Eucharist because only from Easter can the Church be born and the Church must in some ways always be contemporary to him. And he who died and rose again must always be contemporary with the church. We need our life to start and continual return to the mystery of the Eucharist as the crucial moment in the history of the world, which is the death and resurrection of Christ. Che è la morte e risurrezione di Cristo. In sintesi. L'Eucaristia è sorgente. In summary, the Eucharist is the source of holiness of life because it is the memorial of Easter. It is the contemporaneity of our life to that event, in that event, to our existence. The, the, the Pascal mystery reveals and communicates love as the content of the holiness that we are called to live in every circumstance of life. In the second part of my presentation, I will try to address the role of Eucharist and then spiritual worship, the Logike Letreia and holiness of life. So let us now try briefly in this second part to highlight some elements that dynamically show how the Eucharist is the source of holiness in daily life and the transfiguration of existence. It is necessary to consider, first of all, how the mystery of the Eucharist generates the believer a new form of existence. The Eucharist tends to give life a new form. It constitutes a principle of unstoppable change. This transformation of life is the process of sanctification of our existence, which the Apostle Paul calls in the letter to the Romans with a singular expression, logike letreia, spiritual worship pleasing to God. I therefore exhort you, brethren, by the mercy of God, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual worship. This is the first paragraph uh, from, uh, from uh, the letter of Rome. In, in fact, by its nature, the Eucharistic celebration involves us intends to ensure that the whole of life is transformed by the Paschal mystery realizing in time the vocation to holiness. 
evocatively, some exegetes have proposed to translate this expression logica letraea with the cult convenience to the human. Ha tradotto con culto convenient that a man is being made to correspond to God's call. It is a cult that in that indeed the human in its con- constitutive dimension of freedom, affection and intelligence, soul, body and uh, spirit. The cult convenient to the human is not limited to the celebration, to the rites, but tends by its nature to invest the whole of life by transfiguring it in the image of the mystery celebrated. Trasfigurandola ad immagine del mistero che celebra. Benedetto XVI, in Sacramentum Caritatis, ricorda che il mistero creduto. In commenting on St. Paul's words to the Romans, Benedict XVI, in Sacramentum Carita, Caritatis, recalls that, that the mystery believed and celebrated possesses in itself a dynamism which makes it the principle of new life in us and the form of Christian existence. All this leads as to identify with sentiments and with the thought of Christ, Christ, generating in us a new mentality, which opens us to the needs of our brothers and sisters, feeling compassion for them. This is the close link between worship and culture, of which the famous Benedictine monk Jean Leclerc spoke. Pertanto, la logica la treia permette di percorrere... Therefore, the logica latreia makes it possible to walk the circulatory between the Eucharist as a source of holiness and the circumstances of life, generating in us the Eucharistic form of existence. It goes to indicate how the celebration itself and adoration tend by nature proper to the transformation of life according to the mystery that the church celebrates. Let us consider first of all how Jesus' institution of the Eucharist radically involves the lives of his disciples. He anticipates in the sign of bread and wine the, the Paschal mystery the gift of his body and blood, what he will live in solitude and abandonment on his on the cross. He wants to anticipate at the Last Supper, fully involving his own. In this way, he includes them objectively in the gift of the, the mix of himself and entrusting him with the memorial of this saving event. The Eucharist draws us into the self-giving of act of, of Jesus. We do not only receive the incarnate logos in a static way, but we are involved in the d- dynamics of its donation. He draws us within himself sacramentum, caritatis. The interweaving of the freedom of Jesus and that of the disciples is particularly seen in the obedience that asked asked, uh, for them. Do this in remember remembrance of me. The celebration of every Eucharist is, Ambrosiana, is obedience to Christ. Al comando di Cristo. Pertanto, nella celebrazione, il sacerdote... Therefore, in the celebration, the priest and the faithful conform their freedom to the freedom of Christ. The, the freedom of the faithful takes on, on a Christological form in obedience. In the perspective of the logiche letreia and the Eucharistic form of existence, this remembering is evidence 
is evidently not limited to the right, but extends to the whole of life. In this way, the liturgical action gives our freedom the form in which it can embrace every other circumstance so that everything can be transfigured by this command. Interesting in this regard is the notion of the memorial in reference to the Eucharist. It goes to indicate how the mystery celebrated is not merely a memory of a past event, a source of nostalgia or consolation. The memorial is the reappearing in the form of the celebration of a past event that does not cease to be present and, in, and, and, and defective. In this perspective, the memorial intercepts the anthropological experience of memory, which is distinguished from the mere memory of the past. Memory, in fact, is the faculty that allows us to recognize the present, what has been experienced in the past. Di riconoscere nel presente ciò di cui si è fatto esperienza nel passato, ma nel presente. Tant'è vero che memory loss, on the contrary, does not allow to recognize faces, voices, and events. Nel presente, se ho perso la memoria, non riconosco più un volto che ho conosciuto nel passato. Il memoriale... So, so if, if I lost my memory, I will not recognize that this face is the memorial, therefore, nourishes the, the memory of Christ and enables us to recognize him in the circumstances of life. The beginning with the Eucharistic celebrations. A partire dalla celebrazione eucaristica, quale sorgente di vita santa, as the source of holy life, the Christian can live and act in memory of him, continuing to obey his command in the sanctification of daily life. In this sense, we have a strong quotation from uh, the new Christian worship embraces every aspect of life, transfiguring it. Whether you eat or drink or do anything else, do everything for the glory of God, from the Corinthians. In every act of life, the Christian is called to express true worship of God. The Eucharist makes possible day after day the progressive transfiguration of man called by grace to be the image of the Son of God. There is nothing uh, authentically, uh, authentically human thoughts and um, affections, words and deeds that does not find in the sacrament of the Eucharist the appropriate form to be lived to the full. He emerges. The whole anthropological value of the radical newness brought by Christ with the Eucharist. The worship of God in human existence is not relegated to a particular and private moment, but by its nature tends to pervade every aspect of the reali reality of the individual. Worship pleasing to God thus becomes a new way of living all the circumstances of life in which every detail is exal exalted insofar as it is lived within the relationship with Christ and as an offering to God. ...che ci chiama attraverso le circostanze della vita quotidiana alla santità. La vita è vocazione... The same Christ who calls us to his table is the same one who calls us through the circumstances of daily life to holiness. That is a vocation because reality is a provocation to the holiness of love. According to the, to the um, happy formula of Saint Ignatius of Antioch, Christians are, are those who live the circumstances of, li of life according to the mystery 
They celebrate Lux de Dominicum Viventus. This is where the drama of modern Christianity finds its end, which, as St. Paul the VI said, consists in the division between faith and life, between the gospel and culture. Evangelii Nuntiandi, 20th paragraph. By rediscovering the Eucharistic form of life, we are called to understand that no circumstance of life is alien to the Christian life. Events, affections, work, birth, death, illness, rest, celebration. Everything is given for the sanctification of life. Now, talking about the Eucharist and the witness of charity. Well, the Eucharistic celebration, the source of holiness, also shows the ultimate content of Christian witness. The liturgy teaches us not to put ourselves at the center of the uh, center, but the mystery celebrated. The witness never brings himself uh, to others, but what he in turn has received by grace. Wonder at the gift that God has given us in Christ gives us lives a new dynamism. Committing ourselves to be witnesses of His love. Si può dire che la testimonianza è il mezzo con cui la verità dell'amore di Dio raggiunge. We become witnesses when, through our actions, words, and way of being, another appears of communicates itself. It can be said that witness is the means by which truth of God's love reaches man in history, inviting him to accept the radical in newness freely. In witnessing, God exposes himself, so to speak, to the risk of man's freedom. The witness wants to be a living sign, a transparency of the mystery celebrated in all the circumstances of life. He is not worried about himself, but about the gift he has received and that he wants to communicate with his whole self to others. Pope Francis records the Christians go to Mass to participate in the procession and resurrection of the Lord and then live more as Christians, the commitment to Christians witness uh, opens up. We leave the church to go in peace, to bring God's blessing to our daily activities, to our homes, uh, to our workplaces, to the occupations uh, of earthly city, glorifying the Lord with our lives. Una colletta, esprimere nella vita il sacramento ricevuto. Through the Eucharistic, the Lord Jesus enters into us, into our hearts and into our flesh, so that we may express in life of the sacrament received in faith. All this appears emblematically in the way in which the ecclesial experience uh, meditating on the gospel has identified the forms of, of the service of charity, for example, in the corporal and spiritual works of mercy. In particular, those that refer to the body are particularly expressive of, of the link of holiness with the Eucharistic celebration. Suffice it to think here of Matthew 25, in which the works of mercy describe the forms of service to our brothers and sisters in need. A need which, illuminated by the richness of the liturgy and the respect of the holiness, is introduced in imitation of Christ into the anthropological and theological horizon of desire, eschatological fulfillment, and the bisogno del pane ultimate meaning of life from the need of bread to the bread of life the, Euch the eucharist nourishing us with jesus in us to love and service it returns to make us see christ in the little ones St. John's Christmas, uh, Chrysostomus unites the Eucharist and the sharing on the one horizon. Do you wish to honor the body of the Savior? The one who said, this is my body, is the same person who said, 
you saw me hungry and you gave me food. Therefore, he honors Christ by sharing your goods with the poor. Finally, I will talk about the relationship of the Eucharist, holiness, and martyrdom. The link between the Eucharist and the holiness of life appears in the most evident transparency where witness reaches its form of accomplished in martyrdom in the gift of life. In fact, witness to the gift to oneself, even to martyrdom, has always been considered in the history of the church as the combination of the new spiritual worship. Offer up your bodies. One thinks, for example, of the account of the martyrdom of St. Polycarp of Smyrna, a, dis a disciple of St. John. The whole dramatic event is described as a liturgy, indeed as a becoming Eucharist of the martyr himself. Let us think of Ignatius of Antioch. He considers himself the wheat of God and desires to become in martyrdom the pure bread of Christ. Therefore, martyrdom, a grace which God grants to the helpless and which no one can claim, it is the defeat of every eclipse of God. It is his return in fullness through the offerings of life by his children. Una consegna di sé che vince il male. A self-delivery that overcomes evil, even the unjustifiable one, because it rebuilds unity even with the one who kills. Just as Jesus takes our evil upon himself by forgiving us in advance, so the martyr embraces his execution in advance in the name of God's own gift of love. Di Dio stesso. The vivid and disarming testimony in every recent times comes to us from the Trappist monks of Tiberin in Algeria, recently beatified by Pope Francis. The circulatory between the Eucharist and the Holiness as dedication to those peoples they loved so much was palpable in them. Si vede brillare l'Eterno nel tempo, il tutto nel frammento. In the testament of the prior von Balthasar, Christian de Chergé, we see the eternal shine in time, the all in the fragment, when he offers forgiveness in advance to the one who will kill him. And you too, last minute French who will not have known what you were you were going what you were doing. Yes, Dio, nel cui volto ti contemplo e che ci sia Yes, I also want for you this thank you and this to God in whose face I contemplate you. And may it be granted to us to find ourselves blessed thieves in heaven, if it pleases God, to our, uh, the our Father of both of us. In martyrdom, we see, therefore, in all of its fullness, the logiki letreia, the Eucharist, and its beating a source of holiness to the point of the gift of, of self out of love to the forgiveness of the enemy in imitation of Christ, King of Martyrs. In this report, we have sought to illustrate the Eucharist as the source of holiness of life, first of all, by recognizing the original link between the Eucharist celebration and the vocation to holiness of all the faithful. In addition, an attempt was made to highlight some dynamics that, starting from the Logicae Latreia, describe the ability of the Eucharist to transform life up to the sanctity of martyrdom. Trovo suggestivo. I find it ev evocative to conclude this reflection by taking up an effective image of Benedict XVI at the World Youth Day celebrated in Cologne 2005. In which the Eucharist ability to sanctify life was expressed nuclear fission brought into the depths of being, the victory of love over hatred, the victory of love over death. Only this 
intimate explosion of good that conquers evil can then arouse the chain of transformation that will gradually change the world. All other changes remain superficial and do not save. The first fundamental transformation of violence into love, of death into life, then drags with it the other transformations. Le altre trasformazioni. Bread and wine become his body and blood. The body and blood of Christ are given to us so that we ourselves may be transformed in turn. We ourselves must become the body of Christ. Consanguineous with him. We all eat the one bread. But this means that we become one. Adoration becomes union. God is no longer alone before us, like the totally other. He is within us, and we are in him. We hope that this can happen more and more every day in all the holy people of God and throughout the world. Thank you so much.